Welcome again to day 44 of our Lent series. It is Holy Thursday and we begin the Easter Triduum, which is the highest time of the church's liturgical year. The Easter Triduum, also known as the Paschal Triduum or Holy Triduum, is a period of three days that begins with the liturgy on the evening of Mount Thursday, reaches its point in the Easter Vigil and closes with the evening prayer on Easter Sunday. Every single Mass, we hear the words, On the night he was betrayed, that night was Holy Thursday, and it is one of the most important nights in the Christian history. Here are some of the things we need to know about Holy Thursday. 1. What happened on the original Holy Thursday? According to the Gospels, Jesus on the Holy Thursday sent Peter and John to arrange for them to use the upper room to hold a Passover meal. Washed the apostles' feet, held the first mass, instituted the priesthood, announced that Judas would betray him, gave the new commandment to love one another, indicated that Peter had a special pastoral role among the apostles, announced that Peter would deny him prayed for the unity of his followers, held all the discourses recorded across five chapters of John, from chapter 13 to 18, sang a hymn, went to the Mount of Olives, prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, was betrayed by Judas, stopped the disciples from continuing a violent resistance to his death, healed the ear of Marcus, the high priest servant, after Peter cut it off with a sword, was taken before the high priest Anas and Caiaphas, was denied by Peter, was taken to Pilate. The events of Holy Thursday can be found in Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 to 75, Mark chapter 14, verse 12 to 72, Luke chapter 22, verse 7 to 62, and John chapter 13, verse 1 to chapter 18, verse 27. Number two, why is Holy Thursday? sometimes called Moundy Thursday. The word Moundy is derived from the Latin word mandatum or mandate. This word is used in Latin text for John chapter 13 verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Holy Thursday is thus called Mount Thursday because it was on this day that Christ gave us the new commandment, the new mandate to love one another as he loves us. Number three, what happens on this day liturgically? Several things which include the bishop celebrates a Christmas mass with his priests, the mass of the Lord's Supper is held in the evening. At the Mass of the Lord's Supper, the priest performs the washing of feet. The tabernacle is empty and the Eucharist is put in a place of repose. The altar is stripped. The faithful are invited to spend time in Eucharistic adoration while the sacrament is in repose. Number four, what is Christmas? 
yesterday we looked at what Christmas is and what is done. And according to the main document governing the celebrations connected with Easter, Paschales Solemnitatis, in addition to what we saw yesterday, the faithful are also encouraged to attend Christmas in order to receive the Eucharist. Number five, why is the Mass of the Lord's Supper significant? According to Paschalis Solemnitatis, number 45, careful attention should be given to the mysteries which are commemorated in this Mass. The institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the priesthood, and the Christ's command of brotherly love. And the homily should explain these points. Number six, is the Eucharist in the tabernacle during this Mass? No. According to Pascalis Solemnitatis number 48, the tabernacle should be completely empty before the celebration. Hosts for the communion of the faithful should be consecrated during the celebration. A sufficient amount of hosts should be consecrated to provide also for the communion on the following day, which is Good Friday. Number seven. What does this rite of foot washing signify? And is it to be done for men only? According to Pascharis Solemnitatis number 51, the washing of the feet of the chosen men, which according to tradition is performed on this day, represents the service and charity of Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. This tradition should be maintained and its proper significance explained. The rite, however, is optional. It does not have to be performed and it was only made part of the Mass of the Lord's Supper in 1955 by Pope Pius XII. So its modern liturgical use does not even go back that far. Although the church's official text use language that indicates only men can be washed their feet on Holy Thursday, the situation today is more complex. In many places, women's feet are being washed, and even Pope Francis himself has done so many times, including washing the feet of a Muslim girl in 2013 during the Mass of the Lord's Supper, which he had in the prison. Number eight, what happens at the end of Mass of the Lord's Supper? According to Pascharis Solemnitatis number 54, after the post-communion prayer, the procession forms with the crossbar at its head. The Blessed Sacrament, accompanied by lighted candles and incense, is carried through the church to the place of reservation with the singing of the hymn Panje Lingua or some other Eucharistic song. This rite of transfer of the Blessed Sacrament may not be carried out if the liturgy of the Lord's Passion on Good Friday will not be celebrated in the same church on the following day. Number 55 states, the Blessed Sacrament should be reserved in a closed tabernacle or pix. Under no circumstances may it be exposed in a monstrance. The place where the tabernacle 
or the peaks is situated must not be made to resemble a tomb and the expression tomb is to be avoided. The chapel of repose is not prepared so as to represent the Lord's burial, but for the custody of the Eucharistic bread that is distributed in communion on Good Friday. Number nine, is there to be Eucharistic adoration at this time? According to Paschalis Solemnitatis, number 56, after the Mass of the Lord's Supper, the faithful should be encouraged to spend a suitable period of time during the night in the church in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament, which has been solemnly reserved. Where appropriate, this prolonged Eucharistic adoration may be accompanied by the reading of some part of the Gospel of St. John, chapters 13 to 17. From midnight onwards, however, the adoration should be made without external solemnity because the day of the Lord's Passion has begun. Number 10. What happens to the decoration of the church at this time? According to Paschales Solemnitatis, number 57, after Mass, the altar should be stripped. It is fitting that any crosses in the church be covered with a red or purple veil, unless they have already been veiled on the Saturday before the fifth Sunday of Lent. Lamps should not be lit before the images of saints. Traditionally, Maundy Thursday was also the day on which those who needed to be reconciled to the church in order to receive Holy Communion on Easter Sunday could be absolved from their sins. And as early as the 5th century, it became the custom for the bishop to consecrate the holy oil of chrism for all the churches of his diocese. This chrism is used in baptisms and confirmations, also donations throughout the year, but especially at the Easter Vigil on the Holy Saturday when those who are converting to Catholicism are welcomed into the church. I hope now we understand something on Holy Thursday. May we take this day with the Lord as he goes through betrayal. I wish you a blessed Easter treat.